Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. Richard Widmark in tonight's presentation of... Suspense. Tonight, as Suspense begins its 11th year on the air, Autolite presents the dramatic recreation of an exciting historical event, A Message to Garcia. Our star, Mr. Richard Widmark. Hello, Harlow. How was your vacation? Ah, swell, Hap, and I never had to fill my battery once. Hey, you must have an Autolite stay full, Harlow. Ah, you know it, Hap. The famous battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. And how are you feeling, Harlow? As alive and alert as an Autolite stay full, the battery that's full of pep and ready to work in a wink. Fiberglass retaining mats protect every positive plate to reduce shedding and flaking and give the Autolite stay full longer life as proved by tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. Uh Uh-huh. And where did you vacation, Harlow? Why, at my Autolite battery dealer's, of course. He's an expert on servicing all makes of batteries. To quickly locate him, call Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. I'll gladly tell you the name of your nearest Autolite battery dealer, where you can get an Autolite Stayful, the battery that needs water only three times a year. In normal car use. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents transcribed A Message to Garcia, starring Mr. Richard Widmark, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. In 1898, down Havana Way, the battleship Maine in the harbor did lay. One February night, there was a terrible boom. 260 sailor boys met their doom. The Spaniards said, we are not to blame. The Americans cried, remember the Maine. The insults flew very thick and fast. Till obviously the peace couldn't last. On the island of Jamaica were some brave Cuban men. So Lieutenant Andrew Rowan was sent to see them. Once upon a time, long ago, Lieutenant Andrew Rowan went to see them. Oh, Rowan, over this way. I was just beginning to wonder if you'd gotten lost. Hello, Mr. Carter. Sit down. Thank you. I took the liberty of ordering you a drink before dinner. Best rum in Jamaica. Thanks. Well, this looks like quite a place. American consul's job to see that tourists are introduced to interesting places uh-huh. and to point out uh, interesting people. This is a sort of diplomatic hangout. Well, that's the German consul over there and the Spanish charge d'affaires at that table. I see. The only other person you should know is the man sitting by himself near the window. He's Cuban, an exiled patriot. His name is Dr. Jose Rubio. Now, uh, pick up your menu. I've got a good look. He's the one? I'm not positive, but everything I've found out points to Rubio. It'll take more time to make sure. How much more time? One other two days at least. Then the quick way to make sure is to talk to him. The quick way, yes, but... Huh? Of course, that's up to you. How do I reach him? 474 Perch Street. Just be careful. Everyone knows Jamaica's the jumping-off place for Cuba. The Spanish could be watching him, too. Thanks, Mr. Carter. And if we don't see each other again, cable Washington, I'm on my way. Oh, the uh, Spaniards leaving here walk past us. I guess he liked his dinner. He looked quite satisfied. Maybe he's had good news. He's usually a poker face. Anyway, I hope he gets heartburn. Jamaica was the edge of it. My desk in the War Department back in Washington seemed a million miles away. It had taken two days to sift through the Cubans in Jamaica and come up with Dr. Rubio. When it got dark, I left my tourist hotel and I went to Perch Street. I hadn't had time to feel scared. I knew my orders weren't simple, but it began to catch up to me now. Yes? Dr. Jose Rubio? Yes? 
My name is Rowan, sir. American? Yes, sir. May I uh, speak to you privately? Uh, won't you come in? I hope you will pardon this clutter of papers about the room. Uh, my work habits are not the tidiest. You're alone? Can we be overheard? Overheard? Uh, no. Good. These are my credentials. Andrew Rowan, Lieutenant, United States Infantry. I've been sent here to contact you. I have information that you work for the freedom of Cuba, that you maintain certain relations with the Cuban guerrilla forces fighting the Spanish, General Garcia's forces. Lieutenant Rowan, I am a doctor of philosophy. Jamaica is a British possession. The British frown on such activities. Yes, I understand, sir, but this is urgent. Is there a way a man could be sent to Cuba, to General Garcia? If uh, such a thing were possible, why would it be so urgent? Well, I'll say it plainly, Doctor. We've got to know the strength of the Spanish, what supplies General Garcia needs, and if he'll cooperate with an American army of invasion. Invasion? Yes, sir. A declaration of war between the United States and Spain is very close. When? A week, ten days. The information General Garcia has will govern the whole strategy of our army and navy. You should have come a long time ago, Lieutenant, when the cause of Cuban independence first needed help. Maybe so, sir, but I don't make policy. I will tell you truthfully. I do not know of what assistance I can be. The Spanish have suddenly become very strong. They use this new force to press General Garcia relentlessly. Well, if you could get me to him, sir, I, I'm sure I that want he... to get you to him, Lieutenant. I have received no word from Cuba in six weeks. I am not sure where General Garcia is. I'm not sure even that my communications are still secret. Is there any proof that they're not? No, unless silence is proof. I want to help you, Lieutenant, but you must know the risk to me, to you. To General Garcia. I'm ordered to get to the general, sir. If you're the only way... You like to fish, Lieutenant? How's that, sir? Fish. Out to sea in a boat. I have a friend who knows all the best fishing places between here and Cuba. Oh, yes, sir. I like to fish. When can you be ready? I'm ready now, sir. How about tonight? It takes 36 hours for a fishing boat to cross to Cuba. I burned my identification papers and we left the house. The night was warm. There was a moon and the streets were empty. We walked toward the waterfront and Dr. Rubio told me all he could. The place you will land is called Gran Rincón. Just into the jungle is a house. Perhaps I make difficulties in my own mind, but since I have no word... The Spanish know this place? That is the reasonable assumption, I'm afraid. Well, back in Washington, they told me it wouldn't be easy. Six weeks ago, it would have been a simple matter. The insurrectors held this part of the coast. Garcia would have been easy to reach. Where are the lines now? The hills, the jungle, to the east is all I can tell you. At Grand Rincon. The people there will know... If there is word from the Canada. Only one thing you can be sure of. Where the guns are firing. That is where you will find Jalisto Garcia. Where the guns are firing. Oh, we go this way now. Across the plaza. Right. The third fishing boat. That is my friend. Mm. Even if you couldn't see it, you could smell it. Servacio! Servacio! I'm here. Who is it? Dr. Ruby, Servacio. Uh, the dogs are busy tonight. Can you stay? As long as there is wind. That man. To Gran Rincon. Rincon? I will take him there. What? By sure. It is urgent. It must be done. He is American. His country sent him to Garcia for Cuba Libre. Americano? 
Come on, boss. Thanks. Goodbye, Lieutenant. And success. This is my first trip to Cuba, Doctor. I'll have beginner's luck. Savasio hoisted the big single sail. It caught the wind easily, an ordinary fisherman on an ordinary sea. But I remembered what Carter had said. Everyone knows Jamaica's the jumping off place. And there was a moon. The dock dropped behind us and Rubio's white suit faded into the dark. I felt the boat take the main swell of the ocean. And then something caught my eye. There's not much of comfort on this boat. What do you look at? That light at the edge of town, the way it blinks. Huh? Huh. The shimmer of the air. I watched it. Maybe it was my eye that the blink seemed more than just a shimmering in damp night air. Then it went out. And somewhere behind us... Savasio, you hear it? A steam launch. Supply boat for one of the plantations. You sleep. I will sail. I stretched out on a pile of fishnets and I listened. The sound disappeared in the night. And we were alone on an empty sea. The morning of the second day, Cuba began to grow on the horizon. By late afternoon, we were close inshore, sailing eastward. I watched the jungle. It looked cool and comfortable. There was no sign of war. Americano. What is it, Savasio? Watch this sail. I come about now. You're right in Cuba, Americano. Thanks, Savasio. Ah, it feels good. There's a path that leads into the jungle. I see it. Then I leave you quickly. Spanish patrol boats hide in the coast. Thanks. It is all for one, American. Cuba Libre. Our eyes held for a moment, then I pushed the boat away from the dock. She caught the wind and curved outward. And then I felt the nakedness of standing there, and I started toward the jungle. My imagination was very good. And I was sure that a thousand eyes were watching me. I looked for some movement, something, somewhere ahead. And then I reached the cool, vaulted overhang of the first trees. There was a house. I walked toward it. Hello? Anybody here? Hello? Is anybody... Put up your hands. Huh? Put up your hands. Look, I'm not armed. You don't need that gun. For three years I carry a gun. I will decide if I need it. I was told the people at this house would help me. Help you how? Who told you this? Dr. Jose Rubio. Come in, Jean. Teresa. Who is it, Teresa? It says Rubio sent him. Rubio? Hey, I watch you come from the boat. You wear plain clothes, but you walk like a soldier. How do I know you come from Rubio? If you let me put my hands down, maybe I could prove it. Teresa? Do it slowly, soldier. Now, here, look. These coins. This one's British, Jamaica. And this one's American. You see, United States of America. And on this side, liberty. You are American? Yes. Why does Rupio send you? To see your general, Calixto Garcia. <laughs> Garcia? Garcia was driven from this part of the country six weeks ago. Can you take me to him? Take you? Yes. There are many Spanish between here and Garcia. Now look, believe this or not, the United States will land an army to help Garcia if you can get me to him. You know nothing of this kind of war. Well, I'm here to learn, to help you. But I can't help unless I get to Garcia as quickly as possible. We would need horses. Oh, don't, Tommy Jean. Oh, 
This man needs the help. Cuba needs the help. Good, good. Where do we get horses? The Spanish have them all. We take from the Spanish. I go with you. You? I do not stay here alone. Well, yes, but I can't... Well, well what I mean is that we... Because we... I am a woman? <laughs> you know nothing of this kind of war. The sun was almost down when we left, and the jungle had filled with shadows. I walked between them. Domingue in front, Teresa behind. Domingue carried a machete. He hacked at the jungle in front of us expertly. If we were going in any definite direction, I couldn't tell. Americano, do you have a name? My name is Rowan. Yeah. And like Garcia, you are the general of this army of yours? <laughs> No, no, the general sent me. I'm a lieutenant. Teniente, I was a capitan. Well, where will we find these horses? See, jungle ends, too. There is a valley. The Spanish have a remote of cavalry mount. Wait. Look, this guy behind us. Fire. They're burning the house. Who is it? Spanish. <laughs> you are not so secret, Americano. They know you are here. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Richard Widmark in A Message to Garcia. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Well, Harlow, I guess everybody needs a vacation. Not the Autolite Stay Full Battery Hap. That energetic instigator gives quick, dependable starts day in and day out in heat and cold and needs water only three times a year in normal car use. And the Autolite Stay Full leads a long life and a happy one, eh, Harlow? Yes, sir, Hap. Fiberglass retaining mats protect every positive plate to reduce shedding and flaking and give that Autolite Stay Full longer life as proved by tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. Best battery money can buy, right, Harlow? Right, Hap. So, friends, visit your nearest Autolite battery dealer and have him test your battery. If you need a new battery, be sure you get an Autolite Stay Full. The battery that says right on the case needs water only three times a year in normal car use. You can quickly locate your nearest Autolite battery dealer, phone Western Union by number, and ask for Operator 25. And I'll gladly tell you the name of your nearest Autolite battery dealer. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Richard Widmark in Elliot Lewis's production of A Message to Garcia, a dramatic recreation well calculated to keep you in suspense. Who is it? The Spanish. This way, this way. Here. Stop your rest. Teresa. Uh, I'm all right. We hide here before. They won't find us. They think they're shooting at us off there. Rowan? Yeah? You sure you're not the general of your army? You seem to be very important to them. I don't understand. How could they have found out about, about this you? <laughs> the Spanish are more clever than you think. Yes. I'm, uh, I'm very sorry about the house. In this war, a burning house is nothing. We waited there as the sun set. It was the first contact with Spanish war. They knew I was in Cuba. They were looking for me, and they were strong. What safety there was would be in the night. Finally, the shadows combined into a velvet black curtain. 
Deming Green listened to the sounds in the jungle and said it was safe to go. We left the jungle in another mile and came out in the valley. Then we walked along a dirt road until Domingo stopped. There was the smell of horses in the damp night air. Just through those trees. Teresa, wait for us here. Si. Give me the gun, Teresa. No, no gun. There are only a few guns. If it is necessary, I use the machete. She'll be all right? Teresa? <laughs> she can take care of herself. Saddled and ready to go. Presents from the King of Spain. You take yours. I will be Teresa's. Oh, oh, oh boy, oh boy. The big man. What? A soldier. Drag him out of the way. Right. There. Why do you wait? Get the horses. I. I. Yes. Did you learn about the war? Yes, I learned. Easy, boy. Easy. rode for three nights through burned cane fields, jungle, and the tall Cuban grass. Garcia had done a lot of retreating in six weeks. Then on the fourth morning, just before daybreak, Dr. Rubio's words came back to me. Where the guns are firing, that's where you'll find Calixto Garcia. I cannot see where they are shooting. Just so long as it isn't in this direction. To enter where I am, we must cross the field. No more jungle to hide us. Is Garcia there in the town? I think so, yes. Then we've got to go. We bent low and raced for the town. And as soon as we rode into the open, the Spaniards saw us. Little puffs of dirt kicked up all around us. I felt as if the town would never get close. And then finally... Ha-ha! <laughs> we make it. Welcome to Miami. Uh... You! You people! Hello. Uh, you crazy? You never should have made it across that field. Well, we, we didn't have much choice. I want to see General Garcia. You want to fight, I will give you gone. This man is Americano. He is sent by his generals to see ours. Americano. Uh, all right, Americano. Now come with me. Send your men to the front position. Gomez, I want a report on the ammunition. They tell me I should make time for you. You are American. You want to see me? Yes, sir. Lieutenant Rowan, United States Infantry. You have aroused the whole Spanish army. Did you have to bring them with you? My orders were to get to you, sir. I'm instructed to tell you that the United States is prepared to enter the war against Spain. The War Department requests your knowledge of the Spanish army and wishes to know if you will cooperate with our forces. The destruction of your battleship, is that it? That, sir, and the Spanish treatment of your people. When will this war be declared? It might be already declared. When I left Washington, they told me the Spanish would declare on us or we on them in a week to ten days. Then that is why the Spanish drive me so hard. To destroy the insurrectos quickly so you will have no base. I will need supplies before your army gets here. Guns, ammunition, food. I need them quickly. They'll be sent to you, sir. The guns, Lieutenant. What kind will you send? Our standard guns, sir. Then I will show you something. Can they compare with this? Mauser. It's German. And it fires a clip. Five shots by working the bolt. A man does not have to reload by hand. And our guns fire single shots. Each man who has one is made into two. The Spanish are armed with Mausers. Well, we don't have anything like it. Then send me your automatic guns, the Colt, the Gatling, and make many more. Tell your generals they come to no simple war. Yes, sir. I see. May I take this with me? Take it and get to your generals quickly. General Sanchez, 
I want you to escort Lieutenant Rowan as quickly as possible to the north. See that he leaves the shores of Cuba safely. Si, General Garcia. I trust you are the forefront of your army, Lieutenant. For Cuba Libre. Colonel Sanchez took me to food. And again, there was the waiting for the night. I watched the Mauser in action, and the Spanish knew how to use him. It was no simple war. As the shadows began to lengthen, the fighting died down. Sanchez picked three men, and we started north. There was luck, and we reached the ocean in two days. The boat is not much, but at least it does not leak. Thanks, Sanchez. With the good wind, you should make the British island of Inawa tomorrow. We will be waiting for your army. It'll be here. Cuba Libre. The winds were fair as he sailed all night. The sea was friendly to the Cuban flight. He reached in Ahoa safe and sound, and was soon on another boat homeward bound. The generals were told what he had to say, and it all brought the victory of Cuba Libre. Suspense. Presented by Autolite, tonight's star, Richard Widmark, will return in just a moment. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, the world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. In 28 plants from coast to coast, Autolite makes over 400 products for cars, trucks, tractors, planes, boats, and industry. These products include batteries, such as the famous Autolite Stay Full, ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, both standard and resistor types, Autolite starting motors, generators, coils, distributors, voltage regulators, wire and battery cable, and Autolite original service parts for all Autolite electrical systems. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. So, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now I'd like to present Richard Widmark and our producer-director, Elliot Lewis. Thank you, Harlow. Dick, I'm happy to inform you that for the second consecutive year, you've been voted Autolite's Golden Mike Award for the best male performance of the year on Suspense. Congratulations, and here, this is for you. Thanks very much, Elliot. That's a very handsome trophy. And now, if I may, I'd like to tell your audience that next week, the First Lady of Suspense, Agnes Moorhead will star in a very special show called The Empty Chair. It salutes the American Automobile Association and its wonderful traffic safety program. I highly recommend that all of you listen next week to... Suspense! Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Rennie Garagank and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Portions of this program were transcribed. A message to Garcia was adapted for suspense by Richard Chandley. Featured in tonight's cast were Anthony Barrett, Joseph Kearns, Lillian Baeff, Jack Crucian, Ted DeCosia, and Edgar Barrier. Our singer was Ernest Newton. Richard Widmark appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of the Technicolor production The Robe in Cinemascope. No special glasses needed. World premiere in New York September 16th in Los Angeles on the 24th. And remember, next week, Miss Agnes Moorhead in The Empty Chair. This is the CBS Radio Network.